I'm Meng Wang from Cornell University, and I, I've done this work with Wei Yu Xu, a, a professor at the University of Iowa, and my advisor, Kevin Tang. Okay, so the problem we are considering is fast recovery over networks. I, I know it doesn't make sense right now, but I'll, I'll explain what that means in a minute. So we start with the monitoring of engineering networks. In such networks, we want to recover the key characteristics. For example, in the internet, we want to know the link delay at every link. In the power networks, we want to know the voltages at every bus. But the problem is we cannot recover, we cannot directly measure such characteristics. Therefore, we need to infer these parameters from indirect observations. Like in the internet, although I cannot measure link, to link delays, I can measure end-to-end -end pass delays. Then the question is, how can I recover these link delays from end-to-end -end pass measurements? Well, like the power network is the same. I have power measurements, and I want to recover the voltages at every bus. Well, it's theoretically doable if I have enough observations or enough indirect measurements. But in reality, we don't have enough observations, or the number of observations we have is much less than the number of variables we want to recover. So therefore, it's an um, underdetermined system, or we have incomplete information. So in this case, how can we do, how can we recover these observations, uh, parameters? So the good news is, if the signal itself is sparse, which means its most coefficients are zero, then you can still recover these signals exactly from a small number of observations. So that actually is the topic in compressed sensing or sparse recovery in recent years. But this is actually the model of compressed sensing. You know, uh, X is an unknown vector you want to recover, but it's sparse. They are mostly zero, like here. Only a small fraction are non-zero. And you have linear measurements, Y. And A is uh, like flat measurement matrix. They are linear. Sparse recovery actually says, if X is sparse, then you can recover, you can recover it exactly from Y, even though the dimension of Y is much less than the dimension of X. But the problem is, in sparse recovery, if you look at these matrix, they actually they assume that the matrix can be any real value matrix, which means you can measure the weighted summation of this vector. In, uh, you can wait any weighted summation of this vector. But in natural applications, sometimes some, some coefficients cannot be measured together in one measurement. For example, um, in, the, um, in this transmission network, this x vector denotes the transmission delay at each link. I can measure the delay uh, of a pass if it's an end-to-end -end valid pass, like here. I can measure the delay on these parts of these five links. However, if the part, if the links do not form a valid pass from, uh, from uh, starting end-to-end uh, -end parts, then I cannot measure it. For example, these two links, I cannot measure the summation of these two links directly without going through some intermediate nodes, some intermediate links. Therefore, these measurements in uh, network applications, they should satisfy some topological constraints in the sense that certain elements of this X cannot be measured together in one observation. Then the question is, how can we do sparse recovery in this case? So we actually use a um, graph to characterize as constraints. So each node denotes some value we want to recover. X, X denotes the, all these node values, and X is sparse. Then we characterize the topological constraint in this way. A subset of these nodes can be measured together in one measurement, if and only if their induced subgraph is connected. For example, these five nodes, they're connected, so you can measure the summation in one measurement. And three, four, five, seven, you can measure it in one measurement. However, for one, six, it's not it's directly connected, so you cannot measure their summation in one measurement. OK. Then the question is, under this, so if you have additional topological constraints to characterize the property of whether a subset of nodes can be measured together or not, then the question is, how many measurements do we need to do sparse recovery? So to answer this question, we first consider several special types of graphs. Then we, by, we consider the uh, constructions on general graphs. So the key idea is if the um, graph topology is very limited, like here, you only do measure uh, consecutive nodes, 
then you need other other end measurements. However, we what we are trying to say is, you only add a, a small number of links to this network. For example, if you compare these two kind of networks, the number of links doesn't doesn't um, doesn't increase too much. You can still significantly reduce the number of measurements from uh, order n to order log n. And this order log n is already the best we can do because in the complete graph where every node is connected to every node, the best you can do is order log n. Okay. And we propose some construction algorithm for general graphs. And for each graph, we say that at least rk log n measurements are enough, where r is the uh, radius of this graph. And we also use characterize it on the adult string random graph. Basically, the news is for adult string random graph, when it's disconnected, you can significantly reduce the number of measurements to k log n. And you don't need the graph to be a complete graph. But this is the first topic we consider, which is the um, sparse recovery with topological constraints. And we also consider sparse recovery with nonlinear measurements. Because in the original example, these measurements are linear. We also consider case, what if the measurements are nonlinear? This is a nonlinear function age. How can we do sparse recovery? And we propose some iterative algorithm and discuss its uh, performance guarantee. The third question we consider is, um, for sparse recovery, people consider L1 minimization. L1 is actually a um, convex side version of L0 minimization, because for sparse signal, if you want to find recovery, you, you intuitively you want to recover the fastest one. So we, we say, OK, L0 is what you want to do, and L1 is a convex optimization. And what happens in between for LP? We characterize the performance change when P changes from 0 to 1. The amazing point is, in some cases, in some cases, uh, L, L0 is best and L1 is the worst. However, under some cases, L1 is the best for weak recovery. So if you only want to recover one vector, which is uh, weak, recover, uh, weak recovery means, you basically you should probably go to with L1 minimization, which has a better performance than any LP, including L0 minimization. So that's the key message. OK, thank you.